Hello and welcome back whiskey lovers. Happy Wednesday to you. Uh, my name is Dave. This is Whiskey Blooded. Thanks for joining me here today. Uh, thanks for letting me have last week off too. I got a throat infection and I lost my voice one day and uh, around Wednesday of last week I was in pretty rough shape. So uh, we took a quick break. Now we're back. Uh, this week we'll be reviewing Monkey Shoulder which is so probably something that a lot of you are seeing in your liquor stores near you. It's a very, uh, it's not new new but it's a newer um, scotch, low price, $32-ish, and a lot of people have been asking whether or not they think it's good. So this is Monkey Shoulder, and that's what we're going to be reviewing here today. Before we get into that, I just wanted to thank you guys. I see the uh, lots of new subscribers coming in here, so hopefully for those of you that have just sub subscribed, this will be your first video that I'm releasing as a new video to you since two weeks ago. So um, thanks for, for doing that and joining me and going through this whiskey adventure with me. We encourage open thoughts, opinions, disagree with me, agree with me, whatever you want. This channel is meant to be just a novice scotch and whiskey and bourbon drinker, a novice opinion of whiskey. This is not meant to, I'm not saying I'm the, the most knowledgeable, I have the best palate, that I can taste things perfectly, smell things perfectly. This is just my thoughts. This is my, my video log, basically. So this is just something I want to share with you guys. So let's go into it. This is Monkey Shoulder. So Monkey Shoulder ran me $32.99. I've had this bottle for a couple months. I actually thought I reviewed this one for you guys, but apparently I never did. It's a blended malt scot scotch whiskey. So it's a blended malt scotch whiskey. Um, let me read you a little bit. Here's well, here's the bottle, so you guys can see it. I do like the bottle. I think it's it's pretty neat. It has this these three little monkeys here on the top. It's got a little monkey symbol. If you guys can see that, you know it's um it's a neat little bottle, shorter bottle. But let me read you from the bottle here. So it's Monkey Shoulder Batch 27, smooth and rich, blended malt scotch whiskey. And let me read you the little description they have here. So, rooted in malt whiskey history and inspired by the malt men who still turn the malting barley by hand, Monkey Shoulder is blended in small batches from three of Speyside's finest single malt whiskeys to achieve a smoother, richer taste. Distilled, matured, and bottled in Scotland by William Grant and Sons, family owned since, uh, family -owned since 1887. And then on the side here it says, a, it, just, it defines what monkey shoulder means. A malt man's skill is demonstrated as he turns the malting barley by hand. Years ago, some malt men would develop a strain injury known as monkey shoulder. Thankfully, the condition no longer exists. Um, on the back here, it goes through the same thing, and then it goes through the, the tasting notes. So, um, once again, three of Speyside's finest single malt whiskeys. Um, so they blended three Speyside whiskeys, resulting in a rich blended malt of exceptional smoothness. So the tasting notes. So uh, nose, zesty orange, vanilla honey, and spiced oak. Taste, mellow vanilla with spicy hints. So a pretty um, short description of the taste. So let's do our normal thing. Once again, for those of you that are new to the channel, first we talk about it real quick, pour it out, look at the color, then we know as we taste and then we score it and give you final thoughts. So let's pour it first. $32.99, 43% alcohol by volume, so 86 proof. Monkey shoulder. There we go. There we go. Monkey shoulder, here we go. There is the color of monkey shoulder, it's fairly light got some gold notes to it. Light gold, I would say. Between yellow and light gold. Hopefully that gives you a pretty good idea there. There you go. That might be a little better. The nose. So what did they say? Zesty orange, vanilla, honey, and spiced oak. Let's move this around a little bit here. This bottle's been open for, like I said, about three months. Maybe four months. I do like the nose. I do get orange. I get orange, I get like a wine taste, like sherry t uh, smell. I get the, the orange, the honey a little bit, not as much as I would have thought. But yeah, so I get, I get honey, or I get uh, orange, I definitely get orange, I get lighter fruit, I get a pear, I get some of those sherry wine uh, smells.
And then right at the back, I get a little bit of the, the oak, but, but not, not a lot. Fairly youthful in smell. And from what I remember by the taste, also fairly youthful in taste. Although I do like what it has going on. So as I taste it on the initial, I can almost put my tongue through that honey. So it really comes out. The honey, and as they mentioned, the vanilla, um, some little bit of spice. Pretty decent mouthfeel, but it, it, it's a lot of those fruitier notes that we get in younger whiskeys. At the end, you get this, it just starts to touch on a little bit of a burn, just a tiny little bit of underlying smoke taste. It doesn't really go much further than that. Then it kind of finishes, rather, rather short finish. Once again, characteristic of, of younger whiskeys. And... Um, Maybe a little bit of that chocolatey coffee scotch taste at the end there. Right up front, it's like biting into a pear covered in honey and vanilla and dipping it in wine. And then after that, so in the mid here, it's got this kind of weird youthful metallic taste. Um, and then after that, then you get the spice, then you get that little bit of smoke, those tastes that you really wish would, would develop a little bit more in the mid and to the end. But then, like I said, it does finish fairly quickly. So overall, you know, it's not a bad taste. It's just kind of like, I don't know how I describe this a good way. It's like going to see a really good movie, but only getting to see half of it. And that's what this sort of tastes like. It's like, it's definitely got the flavors, but maybe not the age and, and maybe not the, the right blend of all of them. Maybe a couple, maybe two of the three blends that they had were, were giving me at least the taste that I was going for. Um, so when I, when I see something like this, you know, and it's blended like this, I do expect them to kind of smooth it out more because that seems to be what blends go for. But I, I kind of hoped for a little bit more bite on this. Um, is because when I drink scotch, I like something, you know, that's, that's full and complex and bitey and, and, um, and rich. And this one gets about halfway there. So as for the final score on this one, um, like I said, cool bottle, decent price point. It's a blend. Nothing really terrible about the each individual taste, just maybe not quite at the level that I would hope for. I, it, for a couple more dollars, there's you know other blends out there that I think would do a little bit more. A lot by Compass Box that um, that can put this to rest pretty quickly. So I'm gonna say that this one, I'm gonna put it at around a, uh, I'm gonna say a 78 out of 100. So it's not a bad whiskey by any means. 78's a decent score, at least I think for, especially for a blend at a lower price point. But like I said, uh, the movie comparison is the best one I can give you. It is like going to the movies and only getting halfway through the show. And this one gets you some decent tastes. There's really not anything that bad except for that, that middle palette where you start to, it starts to get a little bit of the, that metallic, youthful, like undone taste, I guess is the best way to put it for me. It just hasn't matured long enough, at least in my eyes or in my mouth. And then the finish is actually quite nice, but it's fast. It's just there and gone. And even now, like you normally when you drink a good scotch 30, 40 seconds later, a minute later, you still got something kind of lingering on your palate. And this is just, it's just gone. It's just there and then it's gone. And uh, it could have used a longer, longer finish. So maybe they smoothed it out too much to uh, appeal to even more novice scotch drinkers than myself. I've said many times on the channel, scotch is not my normal drink. I sip bourbon, um, but I drink scotch. Uh, that's the best way I can put it. Like if it's a, you know, random Thursday night and I'm working late 
and I want to have a drink, it's going to be bourbon. But I still drink scotch and like scotch and um, have really been getting into a lot more of it. But for me, this is even a little too novice for me. So let me know what you guys think. Next week, actually, we have complete opposite end of the spectrum. I found a bottle of, uh, we're going to go scotch again. I found a bottle of Compass Boxes. Uh, this is not a luxury whiskey. So it's, this is not a luxury whiskey. Actually, beautiful wife, can you go grab that? It's right in the front of the liquor cabinet. I'll show you guys the bottle right now. So next week, I'll be doing that. I, I want to show you the bottle because I love the bottle. Um, if I remember correctly, reading about it, it was based on um, some type of art. So anyways, that's what I'll be doing next week. Um, let me know your thoughts on this one today. And then next week, thank you, I will be back with this guy. So this is the, this is not a luxury. Let's take this out so no one gets confused. This is not a luxury whiskey bottle, which ran me 190, if I remember correctly, 180, 190. So we'll be back with that next week. But for now, this was Monkey Shoulder. Let me know what you think. If you guys have any other requests, I'll be around. Have a good one, guys. Thanks for joining me. This was Whiskey Blooded. Enjoy your night.